Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are going to be figuring out how to determine what brake setting to use for the auto brakes in the A320 upon landing. There's actually a really neat tool that's already built into the aircraft but today we're going to talk about how to actually configure it and get your proper settings. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so stepping into the cockpit of the A320, what we're referring to is when we talk about the brakes is the auto brake setting here. Now, typically on a very long runway, you know, you would just tell yourself, well, you know, it's really long. I got plenty of distance. We can use low or this is a bit of a smaller runway. We'll use medium. Now, we never, ever use max. If you ever need max braking power, you do that manually. Um, but uh, low and medium, we do set for the approaches. Um, now, the big question is, is you know, how do you know that you're using the right one? I mean, I haven't had any failures. I'm sure many of you guys, I, I haven't heard of anyone talking about rolling past the runway or, or something to that effect, but flyby wire in their absolute amazingness already put in a tool into the aircraft that enables us to get the answers that we need. And, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay. So stepping over into the fly pad, we want to come down here to the calculator. Here's our top of descent calculator. We want our landing calculator, so we're going to come right here to landing. Input your arrival ICAO, K-L-A-X. Now, if you have any kind of live weather service set up, you know, uh, VATSIM IVAO, Pilot's Edge, I think, has one. Um, you simply want to go get meter, or meet R, excuse me. And you can see it puts in the live weather information. So this is critical to pay attention to if you are not using live weather. Then you're going to need to gather this information for the runway that you're approaching. Okay, a couple things to take note of right away. Runway uh, length, okay, uh, landing distance available is in meters, okay. And uh, the runway altitude, I'm using touchdown zone elevation. Um, but it's going to want that in feet. So make sure you pay attention to these because you're going to have to convert the total runway length into meters. And that's going to be our first step here. So now we're going to bring up Navigraph. Let's go ahead and do that now. So here is the airport information for runway or for LAX. And we're going to be using 25 right as our example today. Now we have 12,923 feet. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and gone to Google. And I just typed feet to meters conversion and it pops up a tool right away. I typed up 12923 and I get 3938 meters back. Okay, there's some decimals there, but I'm not worried about decimal points. So 3938 meters. It's really important to remember this. Okay, so we can actually type that in here. 3938 is our meters or is our runway length. Oh, let me get the Navigraph off the chart. Okay, so that's our current distance uh, or landing distance available. You guys got to forgive me. It's been a very long day, so I'm going to trip over my words a little bit. So 39, 38 meters. And so now we need to find the runway slope. And we're going to be using this meters number in order to find it. So let's go back to Navigraph for a second. The next thing we're going to want to pay attention to is the two runway elevations at the thresholds. So we have 07 left and you can barely see it 115 feet. And then at the threshold of 25 right, you can see elevation right here at 94 feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our highest number and subtract the lowest number to get the difference. So let's bring up our calculator here. Oh, you guys can't see that yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, again, our highest point, 115 feet minus the 94 feet is 21 feet. Now, let's get rid of Navigraph for a second so we can see what's behind there. Remember, we need to use our meters information there. Okay, so we're going to do 21 feet divided by 39 38 meters. 
equals. And this gives us a really weird number. Now, there's um, 3.28 feet to a meter, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this number and we're gonna go times 3.28 equals. And then to get our actual decimal slope, we're going to do times 100. So the formula here, if you are converting runway length from feet to meters, is highest runway elevation minus the lowest runway elevation. That number divided by runway length in meters. That number multiplied by 3.28 and then multiplied again by 100. And that gives us our runway slope of 1.74911112239715559. Or we can just do 1.7 degrees. So our runway slope is 1.7 degrees. So let's go ahead and close that. Let me get this off my screen here. And we have 1.7 degrees. Approach speed, now this is where you're gonna be going over to your, the aircraft's already on the ground here. But uh, this is where we would be looking at our MCDU information under the approach information. So if we go down to the approach phase, right, if we had gone to performance, now this is all takeoff, right? But if we would go next phase, next phase, next phase, next phase, there we go. This is where we would find our approach speed. So let's say in the current configuration, it was 127 knots, okay? So we would come back over here, go to approach speed, 127 knots, and then gross weight. Let me step back down here. Let's turn the displays up on the ECAMs. And do, 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 do. Ah, come on. It helps. And you would normally see it after we've configured everything. Got to remember, we haven't configured the aircraft. But while you're landing, you're on your descent, this is where you would look right here. Gross weight, and it's going to give it to you in pounds. And remember, you're going to have to do another conversion. So you would take your gross weight in pounds, Go to your Google or however you want to do it again and convert pounds to kilograms. And that's only if you have your aircraft configured for pounds. This is where it sort of does make sense to leave it in kilograms. I fly in the U.S. I, I'm, I'm one of those guys who's stuck in, in the weird standard you know, measurement mode of, of uh, pounds. So I know the U.S. is like one of the only countries that still does it. But you would need to convert that weight in pounds to kilograms, which is what we're seeing here. Okay, so whatever your gross weight is, if it's not in kilograms, convert it to kilograms. If it is in kilograms, simply type the number in here. All right, now, runway altitude. For this, I use the touch touchdown zone elevation. Gosh, I cannot talk. My, my body's just done today. So touchdown zone elevation, easiest way you're going to find that is by going to your approach plate. Again, finding runway 25 right. And you're going to find that right here. Touchdown zone elevation, 104 feet. And guys, by the way, keep in mind that all of these charts are available for free on Google. You can just Google Jepson, you know, ILS 25, right, whatever your approach is. So you don't have to use Navigraph. It's just the easiest way to do it for me. Okay, so there's our touchdown zone elevation of 104 feet. So let's again get rid of Navigraph for a second. Runway altitude, 104 feet. On that same approach plate, I'll just bring it back up again. You can see the final runway heading, final approach course, 251 degrees. You can also find that if you're looking at the taxi information. Right here, there's 251, okay? And so we're gonna pop that in there. All right, flaps. Again, this is going to be where you're looking at your MCDU. There's our flaps configuration right there. So right now we're selected for full flaps. And if for any reason you were overweight and if is reverse thrust being used. In our case, we're going to say yes to reverse thrust. And then you just come here and hit calculate. And here's your distances. So on low, we would need approximately on our low auto brake setting, we would need approximately 2200 meters to stop the aircraft medium we need about 1500 meters to stop the aircraft and max again manual you never actually set it to max you would use your your foot pedals you would need approximately 1100 feet to stop the aircraft now let's do this let's say if we needed to 
Let's see, it was a very small runway. Let's see, what do we have there? Lows at 2,200. Let's take this down to 1,300. Okay, put us in a really nasty position here. 1,300 meters. Look at that. We would barely have enough runway. So it tells you right here, medium would take us past the runway because there's our threshold right there or for 1,100 feet. So right here at the red, that's going to be our 1,300 meter mark. At 1,500 and or at low or medium, we would go over the edge of the runway. Okay, so anyways, guys, that's just a real quick uh, and dirty tutorial on how to actually use this chart. I thought that might be interesting to some of you guys. Um, I'm sure most of you probably just do what I do and go, eh, it looks about right. Medium sounds good. You know, let's use that. But uh, I thought you guys might like to know how this tool actually works and how to configure it to get the correct numbers that you're looking for. Hope you guys liked this video. As always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one.